Hey everybody, I'm Ian. This is Mission Movement. If you've ever trained hard, or if you've been training and you get hurt, you've probably heard the importance of mobility work. Despite its popularity and how much I've seen it talked about, I still see a lot of people make the same mistakes over and over and over in their mobility programming and training. So today, we're gonna to talk to you about the five most important things that you should incorporate in your mobility training. Number five, the fifth most important thing that you need to make sure that you do in your mobility programming is just doing something. You have to do something. You can't expect to get better at anything if you don't practice it. So whether that be some soft tissue work, uh, some stretching, some, some joint mobs, whatever it is. If you expect a result without putting forth any effort, you're being foolish. Number four, you have to be consistent. Consistency is the number one thing in all of your training uh, facets, whether it be strength or endurance. If you're only doing uh, whatever you're training on once in a while, you're never gonna see those gains. With mobility, it's no different. In fact, consistently doing targeted mobility work for just a few minutes a day, every day, over the long haul is gonna be far more effective than spending an hour or so once a week trying to get it all done. Consistency will be rewarded with results. Number three, the most successful mobility programming uses a variety of different approaches. So in other words, you're not relying on one facet or one technique to try and get you there. For instance, I see a ton of people walk into the gym and spend 15 to 20 minutes just foam rolling before they go and work out. Foam rolling isn't inherently bad, but it's not the answer in and of itself. Foam rolling is just tissue prep. It'll get those tissues, your muscles specifically, nice and loose and ready to, ready to start firing and going for you and a little bit uh, longer, but it's not gonna make you uh, see expressible mobility gains in the long term. The same thing could be said about uh, stretching or any other thing. Usually it's a, a culmination, a series of different things that are gonna help you get to your end goal of being more mobile and more in control of your movement. Number two, you need to do some end range strengthening and integration. If you are not strong and, and capable of activating the muscles in the new range of motion that you just acquired because of your foam rolling and your stretching and your mobilizing, then you're, you're pretty much sacrificing all the work that you just did. You will see short term results from just doing one or a few of those other things, but if you're not learning or teaching your central nervous system how to control the new range of motion with muscle activation, you're gonna sacrifice that range of motion usually within a day. So there's some really good examples of uh, end range uh, strengthening and or integration exercises. Um, the functional range conditioning folks do it really well with a like a hold contract type, uh, hold relax type of stretching. Um, other common approaches are just eccentric training where you are flexing a muscle and controlling a negative, if you will. So the muscle is getting longer and stronger as it goes through a full range of motion. That's an easy way to kind of cheat the system and get uh, controllable range of motion results pretty quickly. Uh, and there's a bunch of others. Uh, we'll talk about those in future videos. The number one most important thing that you should incorporate in your mobility work is knowing exactly what you need. If you just shotgun approach your mobility and you are uh, just trying out a bunch of different tactics and you're focusing on a whole bunch of stuff because you think you might need it, you never really know. That's why we always focus on whole body movement assessments, right? We go joint by joint with our clients to make sure that uh, you know and we know exactly what joints need, the more, need more control and need more range of motion. And then we design a specific program to focus on the big wins first. If you assess and you know, say, your ankles need range of motion, then you have a baseline from which you know you actually gained mobility. So if you uh, do our ankle range of motion assessment test and you see that you need to gain a few inches of distance from your toe to the box, then you have a baseline score to build from. That way you can go do your ankle range of motion and mobility work 
and then you come back sometime later, reassess, you know what you've done either works or doesn't work. If it didn't work, pivot. If it worked and then you pass the test, cool. It's time to move on to the next thing. That is why assessments are the number one most important thing for you to be able to focus on. So to sum it all up, the five things that you need to focus on in your mobility training are, number five, you gotta do something. Anything is better than nothing. Number four, you gotta be consistent. Make sure you're doing something every day. Number three, use a variety of different approaches. One thing probably isn't enough to just get you through the door and get you to your goals. Number two, no matter what you're doing, always try and incorporate some sort of end range strengthening. So you have that new range of motion, you need to get stronger in that new range of motion. Number one, the most important thing, you have to assess every joint to know exactly what you need. If you don't assess, then you're just guessing. If you wanna learn more about how to assess and how to program good mobility and injury prevention strategies, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons and follow along with us. We have a lot more great stuff coming your way to help you out.